ready to go live. And now we're going to start the recording. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Kathy for January 2022. It's a wonderful frosty morning, but hey, I've got my warm coffee right here. It's got my name on it, so I know who I am. <laughs> There we go, Darius, the Chamber, <laughs> and uh, Betty from Kaiser Fire. We are all good to go and have some visiting time with everyone who is watching today and uh, let you know what's going on. 2022 is off to a fantastic start in many ways. There's other stuff we're all dealing with, but you know what? I am so excited to share some of the good stuff going on in Kaiser. And then with um, my regular contributors here, Ramiro Navarro from Chariots, Betty Hart from the Kaiser Fire District, and joining us from the Chamber of Commerce today is Corey Ferlardo, and uh, we're going to talk about the wonderful First Citizen Banquet. Just a couple of things to bring you all up to speed on. Um, the recruitment for our next city manager is progressing well. We're going to be having an executive session, and then being um, we'll come out and uh, let the community know where we are in the process. We've got some great candidates, I've been told, by our recruitment company. And that's going to be a real help for our city as we bring on this next individual to continue the great work that's been done um, over the last nearly 40 years of the city of Kaiser. So we're really excited for that next phase for the city. Um, the community engagement, um, community diversity engagement committee got started um, with, a. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I've been distracted. Pastor Dominguez needs the link. So I'm gonna send that to him as well. Um, so we're all excited about what's happening there. Um, the group finally met. We have an amazing group of people who um, were appointed for the Community Engagement Diversity, Diversity Engagement Committee and uh, some fantastic leadership. I am excited to see what's gonna be happening with that group and the recommendations that come to council and also the recommendations that come for our community, how we can um, make sure that we are engaging people um, in building relationship for um, doing self-governance, doing community together. So the other thing is, um, may have seen on Facebook and other media, the, um, the 9 p.m. check-in, check where we're encouraging people, again, to remember to turn on your porch lights, to make sure the stuff isn't in your car, that's an easy target for folks, lock your cars, lock your front doors, things like that, that are just really basic security. Um, it really helps our police in a couple of ways. One, we're more eyes on for our entire community because we only have like you know 42 cops and uh, they can't be everywhere at all times. They're not up on the shelf or whatever. Uh, they're real human beings. And we really try to, they use their data and skills to be where they need to be to uh, prevent um, and then deal with um, things that are happening in our community that need their attention. So what our part is, is Lock your cars. You know, most of the car break-ins are not break-ins, they're openings. Mm -hmm. You know, the car's not locked. <laughs> and uh, people open the cars and take off the stuff. It's like the porch pirates. You know, people who are taking things off of people's front porches. So there's some things we can do as a community to make our community safer and less inviting for people who want to do things that are hurtful to, um, to us and our neighbors. So thank you for being a part of that. Thank you for doing these basics so that we are uh, among the people who want to commit crimes. We become known as the place of, yeah, that's not going to be very successful. We'll have to go elsewhere or better yet. You know, there's a lot of really, really well-paying jobs out there. There's a lot of great opportunity in our community right now. And we want to encourage people to seek the job training and, um, opportunities for making a really good life for themselves and their families that don't involve hurting other people through criminal activity. So that's another thing folks can do. 9 p.m. check-in, turn on your lights, lock your cars, get the stuff out of sight, and uh, enjoy a nice peaceful evening. 
The last thing I want to highlight is uh, folks have been hearing about on my page and many others is the points in time count, which is underway right now. So today is day three of the point in time count. We've had fantastic training for volunteers, fantastic connections with people who are experiencing homelessness. And the most important part is building the relationships and trust. So as people are thinking about and willing to take that step to leave homelessness and to um, trust that the services, the security and the sanitation and safety that they are seeking in shelter and other services will be there long-term. We at the Mid Willamette Valley Homeless Alliance are working hard to make sure that we're all using best practices, dignity and respect for the people that we are wanting to serve, desiring to serve, and in it for the long haul, that the work that we're doing will be here, not just today, not just tomorrow, but we're planning for long term. So people can trust that the services they need will be here as they need them and they progress in their lives. We hear success stories at every one of our monthly meetings about people whose lives have been changed, have been saved, have been moving forward into um, incredibly positive results. And big plug for the second annual Homeless Alliance Summit, which will be by Zoom on February 10th. Go to the website for the Mid Willamette Valley Homeless Alliance and sign on uh, to attend, no charge, but you're going to hear some amazing work and find out if you are an individual, a nonprofit, a service provider, a concerned citizen, that is a place to get some great information about how we are continuing to progress in our efforts to make sure that what we provide for people experiencing homelessness will help them leave homelessness permanently. It is truly our goal, and I don't think is understating it, that we can end homelessness in Marion and Polk counties. And we're not going to stop till we do. Mid Willamette Valley Homeless Alliance. So those are my top things I wanted to share with you today from the city of Kaiser. And uh, again, I'm very thankful having uh, my friends here with me today. So I did mention the first citizen banquet, which was a week ago. We got to celebrate some amazing community leaders, surprise the cookies out of them, but more importantly, celebrate how we've got leaders who are in it for the long haul and have been able to um, help others come along with them. Corey, congratulations on a fantastic event and some wonderful examples, including a brand new youth future first citizen. How are you doing, Corey? Good morning, I'm doing well. It's, it's nice to be able to um, join you guys today. My counterpart, Mr. Shackelford is out vacationing, playing golf this weekend and I'm happy to stand in for him. Um, so thanks for having me. Um, yeah, the first citizen banquet was so fun. You know, last year we were able to shift like many of us did and put it um, live streamed and online and still be able to honor some fabulous people um, last year. And then it was pretty um, important to me that we do it in person this year. And um, thankfully we were able to to do that, um, thanks to the city of Kaiser and the fantastic Civic Center for hosting us. And um, it was just so great to be together, like you said, Kathy, and, and many of you, well, two of you, I think were there. So thanks for joining us. <laughs> um, yeah, we had a, a um, Councilor Roland Herrera called me up on the phone, gosh, back in probably December. and shared an idea with me on how we can um, not start honoring our youth, but start recognizing their hard work. Um, I think Kaiser does a pretty stand up job in recognizing the hard work that the youth put in or in and around our community. But it, after speaking with um, Roland and just hearing his heart uh, around um, lifting up one or a few of our youth, it was, it came very apparent that we had some work to do and um, 
you know, we were honored to um, name the award after Dennis Coho and just start a, a little bit of a legacy in his name and in honoring our youth. So <clears throat> after my meeting with Roland, we got to Mr. Jesperson, principal at McNary, and I got together and kind of created a criteria um, around that award and in, in which the high school senior would write an essay for why they would, they feel they deserve um, the award. They would provide three letters of references from, uh, you know, maybe a teacher or uh, a youth leader or somebody that spoke life into their life. Um, and then they would provide a record of volunteering throughout their high school um, years. And many of the kids that applied had like seven, eight years of volunteering. And I don't like, I don't even know how <laughs> Eric and his staff chose the three that they did. I'm getting teary eyed just thinking about it. Um, but these kids um, show up um, and our recipient of the, the award and the thousand dollar scholarship was Logan Reddy. Many of many people know Logan through his mom and dad, Dave and Tammy Reddy, who have volunteered in Kaiser for many, 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 many years. And um, Logan is one who just comes right along. He started volunteering in elementary school with his mom at many Kaiser events, and it just kind of stuck with him. And we were honored to choose him for the thousand dollar scholarship and the award. Um, and then in, in talking with the Kaiser Network of Women through making this award happen, it was pretty apparent that the other two kiddos that were top three um, weren't gonna walk away with nothing. So that was really fantastic. So they actually left, every kiddo left that night with their scholarship in hand. The other two kids, Miranda Coleman and Quinn Bach, uh, received $500 from the Kaiser Network of Women. And then this is just another true testament to how fabulous Kaiser is. I had a, a generous community members call me on Monday and said, how can we make this uh, $1,000 scholarship for all of the kids? And they dropped off another $1,000 so that I could give Quinn and Miranda another $500. It was just really like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, we're, we're, we're a large city for Oregon, but we are a small town when it comes to serving our, our people. Um, and I just am honored and through the roof and moon over the moon about these community members that just continue to make my heart apparent and be able to show how much we love our youth in this community. Um, and I'm just honored to be a part of it and come along with all of you. Um, all of you have been welcoming and, and loving to me and just said, come on, let's go. And so I'm just happy to, to be with you on this journey. Um, and, you know, we had some other fabulous winners that night. Um, Mr. Dennis Blackman from Copper Creek Mercantile, 30 plus years of serving this community um, and recognized as Merchant of the Year. Um, I can remember my mom sending me on my bike down to the store to buy dog food. <laughs> and, and it's just been the place where we've gone. And um, he, that man is just just through the roof generous with his time, um, his love, his support, and most of all his business and the way he supports Kaiser. So he was so deserving in this. And then our very own Miss Danielle Bethel won the Service to Education Award for her, her time um, spent in Kaiser serving our youth. And then again, recognized for her time on the school board and just the charge that she's led to um, serve all the youth in our community. Um, you know, we want to thank her for all the work she's doing and the work she continues to do for us, even though it's a little bit more widespread over the whole county now, she's, um, still continuing to stand up for our youth, still continuing to stand up for our small businesses and loves Kaiser to death. So we're happy to award her with service to education. Um, and then, 
like you said, Mr. Jim Taylor um, received the first Citizen Award and um, so deserving for his many, 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 many years of service through being a Rotar Kaiser Rotarian, um, not to mention his family being here, you know, pretty much from the inception of Kaiser. So we're happy to award him and thank him for all the hard work he's done through serving our youth, serving our city, um, being a city counselor, all the things just stacked up for him. And it's just an honor to be able to recognize such a stand up guy. Couple, and, couple things. Can I jump in real quick here? Yeah, I had the honor of serving with him. Number one, um, did you know that in the middle school after school program, he taught kids how to tie flies? Because he is an expert, and this is not bragging when he can actually do it. He's an expert fly fisherman. So he taught them the art and the science of tying flies. Mm. And um, he loved doing it. And the kids got a lot out of it. And uh, they were good. They, that guy can deliver. Here's the funny part. He doesn't eat fish. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> so, I do. Um, so that's one thing. Number two, um, in the video montage, there was a picture of an egg sitting on the council dais. And for those who don't know, he had been waiting for the opportunity when the um, the spring um, uh, equinox happened, because that's when we would be balanced in terms of a gravitational pull for a raw egg to be able to sit on its end. And the equinox happened during the council meeting. At that time, he was like, can I have the floor? And it was an all stop. We suspended the meeting. He put the egg up there and we had a science moment right then. It so was cool. awesome. And that's where that picture came from, was I from that him. night. And it was a raw egg, I can tell you, because later on, after the cameras were off, I reached for something, I knocked it over and broke it. <laughs> and I can guarantee you, it was a raw egg. It was a mess. Oh my goodness. So there's a couple of Jim Taylor stories uh, to warm people's hearts, but also that breadth of service, creativity, ingenuity, um, and just heart that goes into the service of everybody in this community that chooses to serve. So thanks for letting that's me jump in with that. Yeah, we had one more award, the President's Award, and that's the um, award where our um, board president gets to choose a community member to honor for the year and um bob shackleford picked um daryl fuller and i don't know the the mr fuller as well as um some of you do um but he is just ever since i've been working for the chamber he's showed up to everything um and he's a genuine lover of people and a genuine lover of kaiser and then he has a little bit of a further reach he he's a volunteer firefighter as well and um just continues to serve his community um he's a a lobbyist for the legislature and just continues to make sure that the best choices are made for us as citizens in in oregon and um you know just keep showing up and with a smile on his face and lots of warm hugs and he's just a great guy so it was an honor for us to bestow that award upon him so yeah so those are just some great people in our community and we look forward to honoring them throughout the year and of course doing it all over again in 2023 <laughs> so um real quick uh give us a timeline of some events coming up um ah. so we can mark our calendars for 2022 uh, community-wide events. You've got several coming up and a couple of changes. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, we will be doing um, a food drive for the Kaiser Community Food Bank in April. Um, I believe we decided April 9th. It's the first weekend of April. I don't have my calendar in front of me. The second weekend of April. Um, and we'll be partnering with the McNary Grad Party. And they'll be selling Krispy Kremes and collecting um, soda cans and bottles to 
make sure that those kiddos are getting the best grad party that they can have. And then of course, we're gonna be serving Kaiser Community Food Bank because we believe that everybody should have food on their table. And um, the Kaiser Network of Women are happy to lead that charge for the chamber. Then um, we are gonna be moving into um, May, which we had anticipated having Kaiser Fest back in May, um, but in some talking and preparing um, kind of our timeline of events, the board really loved it in August. <laughs> so we're moving it from May, but we're not letting May go empty. So we're gonna have our um, mayor's prayer breakfast in May. We will be having um, our Kaiser Network of Women Bloom and Iris Open partnered with the Ladies Percy event. Um, and in keeping with our theme for the year, it being Kaiser's 40th celebration, everything will be 80s themed. <laughs> so we're gonna party like 1980 <laughs> all year long. Um, so the, the events in May will be kind of a creation of a, a Kaiser Network of Women events where all the proceeds that we raise through those two events will actually continue to fund the holiday giving basket program. We're just switching it up a little bit, um, making something a little bit fresh and new and um, that we can still serve our, our community with the holiday giving basket program. Is there a parade? We will have a parade, but it will be in August. Okay. So, um, and then on June 25th, we're having a um, Caliber Community Concert down at the Kaiser Rapids Park. And um, so look for more information regarding that. We'll have food trucks, great live music. We'll have some youth bands, some fun time to, to be together. Um, and then in August, on August 11th through the 14th is Kaiser Fest, where we'll have all of our regular events. Um, we'll have live music, a little bit more youth participation. Valor Mentoring will be partnering with us and running um, a little bit more youth uh, music throughout the days that we're down there or where we're to be the on the location. <laughs> um, it's kind of in the works of where we might land so we can serve our community a little bit better. Um, and then some new innovative ideas to make sure we're honoring every person in Kaiser um, and bringing in a little bit more culture to Kaiser Fest and um, that everybody feels welcome and participates at their, at their best level. Um, but of course we'll have live music throughout the evenings and our fantastic um, Kaiser Fest parade. Um, so yeah, and that theme for Kaiser Fest is where were you in 82? Like I said, keeping with. <laughs> you, you and Romero were born. <laughs> I wasn't, I was actually in 83. So I was almost, almost there. <laughs> My mom was here in 82 though. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to. Check with your parents. Um, my husband and I were married um, just weeks after the election for Kaiser to be a form of the city. So um, this is also going to be our 40th anniversary this year as well. So you'll just have to wear your wedding dress to all the events. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I was there. <laughs> my husband and I moved to Kaiser in the late in late 1976. So. We were here and uh, and and were you know voted and uh, my husband ran for the first city council as well. So uh, yeah, he was one of the originals and uh, obviously you were a child bride. Yes, so. mm -hmm. yeah. I admit to having been twelve when we got married. <laughs> <laughs> and those rumors just got started right here. You heard. It. <laughs> We're really looking forward to just <clears throat> making this year a, a great year to support everyone in Kaiser and coming alongside our youth and the 
just the people that make Kaiser tick. Um, we're just, we're so happy. And another thing we have going at the Kaiser chamber starting yesterday actually is we're, we are partnering with the citizenship, um, uh, shoot, I just lost his name. His name is Francisco. Um, he's offering citizenship classes at the chamber um, so that we can have a little bit further reach for folks who want to become a U.S. citizen. And that kicked off yesterday, and I believe they had about eight folks come, um, which is fantastic. Not, not to take away from any other um, places that offer citizenship classes, but we just believe that the more we can offer and serve our community, the better. And that's just one more day, one more space that folks can take advantage of. Um, so look for information on that on our Facebook page and website. Um, we're excited to kick that off and um, support our community. And that's just another way too for us to, to get more folks involved in the chamber because Everybody who comes through those doors, we're going to latch on to you. You better believe that. So we're happy to have that started. Um, and lots more fun things coming down the pipe. Corey, um, I love your energy. Um, I love that uh, you and Ramiro both represent uh, the next generation of leadership. As um, those of us uh, like myself who are boomers, um, we recognize that having really good intergenerational communication leadership um, is what makes a community strong that we diversify by uh, age as well as so many other factors um, as the parent of four millennials who are all professionals in their um, their careers it's been really exciting to watch as each succeeding generation um, takes some of the incredible talents that you all have and resources and just keep it going. So I'm excited. My honor in good company. So I'm gonna shift gears a little bit to um, the Kaiser Fire District to Betty and um, what's happening there. And um, so always glad to have you here, Betty. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and to talk about the fire district. Before I get started on that, however, I would like to share with you, um, I through some of my professional work and volunteer work, I've uh, had at information about what's happening in the uh, homeless community for many years. And uh, I heard recently that a lot of people think it's a new phenomenon that uh, people experiencing homelessness, it's, it's new. It, it hasn't been around very long. Well, that's not true. What is new is that people who are experiencing homelessness now have tents. And so tents are put up in places where you can see them. And when people didn't have tents, they would you know, hide in the bushes on the uh, riverbanks, um, in doorways, along the creek, and uh, in places where you would rarely see them. And, and uh, uh, but it didn't mean they weren't there. They just, you just didn't see them like you do today. Now, there were, well, maybe many more today than there were 20, 30, 40 years ago. I, I, I don't have data about any of that, but the fact is they've, they've been around a long time. Anyway, so let's move on to the fire district and what's happening there. Uh, this In 2021, the number of calls that um, the firefighters responded to was up 20% from 2020, which was, which is huge. Um, we had, um, Six, over 6,400 calls in 2021 and 5,300 calls in 2020. 2020 was down a little bit, about 5% from 2019, uh, in some cases because uh, people did not um, want to go to the hospital or the emergency room or work because of COVID. They were afraid if they had a heart condition or something and they went to the ER, then they would get sick. And uh, they could have been right about that. I don't know. But in any case, our, our calls were down. 
partially because of that, but this last year more than made up for it. So um, the 20% increase over last year, it was 13 over the year before. So it, it, it's a double digit increase regardless of which year you look at. And we are doing a lot of call all, uh, for other jurisdictions. Interestingly enough, we do a fair amount for the city of Salem. They use Falk and, and Falk has not had uh, uh, resources available in Salem that for which there is demand. And, and so um, under our uh, mutual aid agreements with various jurisdictions, our um, ambulances will sometimes uh, respond if they're available to calls in Salem. But the number of, in, I mean, the increase in calls is really one of the things that has prompted the board to authorize um, kind of an organizational evaluation to look at how we um, provide services and organize our staff uh, and volunteers to be able to do respond and to see if there's something that would uh, be more efficient and fair in terms of uh, how, how we do respond. And uh, as part of that, going to take place uh, in April, I believe, we're also doing a cultural assessment to see if there are any issues within the culture of the agency that could be improved. Uh, because uh, with this kind of level of work, uh, stress, stress is a big deal anyway in the fire service. But when you have added um, uh, demand for service, then it's even worse. And so wh what can we do to uh, be sure that people feel um, validated and want to uh, continue? Because uh, fire service has the same issues that many other professions do. People get burned out and move on somewhere else. Um, we do have some openings that we're anxious to get people uh, from the community to uh, sign up for. We have a couple of openings on our budget committee, and there are applications for that available online at kaiserfire.com. And we also have a couple of openings on the Civil Service Commission, which um, is responsible for reviewing uh, the job descriptions and for firefighters and uh, our lists, hiring lists and stuff, uh, because they are hired under civil service rules. Um, the budget committee usually meets at least once, maybe twice in the spring, depending on uh, what all is going on. Many, some of the budget committee members do sit in on the regular board meetings. And of course, our board continues to meet online uh, using GoToMeeting and um, the link is available on our website. So um, anyone who wishes is welcome and um, see what sorts of things we're talking about. We have been keeping our station closed to the public uh, and we kind of evaluate that on a month by month basis. We did meet in person for two or three times, uh, late spring, early summer, and then boom, uh, when the early fall surge came or late summer surge came, we went back to meeting online and we've continued to do that, um, mostly because we don't wanna create any more risk for our uh, staff and volunteers than they already have. And of course, um, they're exposed frequently, uh, needless to say. And Omicron, um, I think is hard to dodge <laughs> because it is so uh, easily transmitted uh, from one person to another. So um, personally, I'm looking forward to the parade. I. Uh, to volunteer to ride in one of the fire trucks in the parade or whatever I can. I just love to do that and to wave at people. It's so much fun. So I'm, um, I'm really looking forward to that. I want to give a brief report about the, um, I 
guess you could call it an accident that occurred recently where the truck uh, went off Trail Avenue and rammed into the house. Uh, apparently it went into a bedroom and the truck was kind of off the ground. And so the driver was trying to put it in reverse and, you know, to back up, but it wouldn't go anywhere because the wheels were sort of spinning in the air and uh, the police couldn't reach him and because of where the truck was in the whole thing. And it, uh, it was really awful. Um, I understand that there were some firefighters uh, or personnel on that call who had been on the call when this driver killed his brother a couple of years ago, which just breaks my heart. And you, I mean, to, to wit, when I was, the situation was described to me, the image that came to my mind and I thought, oh, to witness that would be so traumatic. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. So we know that that, that is particularly um, hard on some of our, um, our staff and volunteers who, who participated. And um, anyway, we, we will have uh, an annual report coming up probably the end of February before we get there. Uh, we're trying to do a public education in the schools. Um, we have the Fire Foundation working and um, probably the biggest piece of news for Kaiser Fire is that Randy Jackson is retiring after 38 years. He started as a volunteer and uh, he became um, the deputy fire chief uh, when we hired um, Jeff Cowan, our current fire chief. He, uh, Randy was the deputy fire chief, continued to serve in that role until he was uh, kind of ready to semi-retire, which he did a few years ago, but he has continued in the important role of managing our uh, billing uh, process. And during that time frame, quite a few things have changed. We changed our software, we changed our billing company, um, and uh, the federal government brought on a couple of uh, reimbursement programs for Medicare and Medicaid. And so Randy has um, helped to manage all of that. It's a pretty, uh, well, it's a very important job for one thing. Um, while ambulance billing, um, the amount that insurance companies pay for a, a ambulance ride does not actually cover the cost of the ride, uh, it is important to supplement the property taxes that help to pay for that. So um, those are, you know, it, it's a very important thing. So we'll be uh, opening that job soon and looking for uh, a professional. And while Randy has been supposedly working half time, uh, <laughs> yeah. he, uh, we do expect to have a full time uh, replacement, and the job will be a full time job in the future. So, um, anybody who's kind of interested in that area, we look forward to hearing from you. And in the meantime, I hope we get some great people uh, to apply to be on our budget committee or the Civil Service Commission. And I, I want to reach out and thank uh, Pastor Jose. Uh, he referred a couple of women to me to volunteer with the Kaiser Library uh, Board. And so I got to meet with them yesterday and uh, we're looking forward to um, uh, welcoming them uh, on the library board. I'm, I'm really pleased to be involved in that um, work and there are a lot of exciting things happening with the, the Kaiser Library. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the uh, 
Kaiser Rotary Club is selling raffle tickets again. We didn't do that last year and they're $50 each. Uh, first prize is $10,000 in gold and silver coin. When I mentioned that to somebody, they said, oh yeah, I'll take one. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, and we are planning, yes. Uh, Pastor Dominguez was the first person to buy a ticket for me. Uh, so we're planning to have our raffle party in person this year on April 2nd and draw the winner at that time. So if you need a ticket, see me or Corey. Corey has some too. <laughs> hey, Betty's killing it selling tickets. Buy them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> there's, there's no competition here. No, <laughs> you know, the, the money goes to um, amazing projects throughout the city of Kaiser for many, many years. Rotary, Rotarian, service above self isn't just a motto, it's what you do, it's right. action. And uh, every single dollar that is entrusted to Rotary, in my experience, has been very well invested yeah. for yeah. long term community benefit. Right. It is, it's so well, the thing that I, it just amazes me is you really have to think of Kaiser Rotary as a shirt sleeve club, because when there is an opportunity, um, they roll their shirt sleeves up and get out and do things. So not too long ago, one of our members proposed uh, the exercise equipment that got put into some of the parks. So not only did the uh, Kaiser Rotary Foundation put the money up to buy the equipment, Rotarian stepped up and actually installed Installed it. So, you know, it's just wonderful the things that they do. And uh, I, I, I get out once in a while, but um, right now I'm handling the computer stuff. It's really my area. <laughs> so thanks a lot, Kathy. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Betty. And as always, there's so much going on in the community. Um, you kind of kicked it over to Pastor Dominguez, so I'd like to go to you, and then uh, Romero, I'm going to have you back clean up. Are you good with that? All right. Pastor Dominguez, welcome. Great to see you, and um, tell us what's going on with um, the church, our faith community, and uh, all, you always have such wonderful stuff going on with um, in our community. Well, we continue to, uh, to share uh, with people that are in need. Um, we continue to encourage them. We continue to, to tell them no matter what it looks like, there's an answer, there's a solution. And, uh, you know, we're, we're there connecting the need with the resource. And uh, there have been a lot of, a lot of need. And uh, we're just so thankful that we're able to help. Uh, we're help, able to help people that uh, are just have broken down and just really need some help and and uh, to see them encouraged uh, to see them helped is 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 just so satisfying uh, to see that uh, i'd just like to to report uh, i had a meeting with betty very interesting meeting with betty um she came to to uh, my office and we were talking about some uh, needs in the community and uh, just appreciate uh, betty for for coming out and, and spending some time and talking. And uh, she had a need regarding the library. Uh, she was looking for some board members and looking for some volunteers. And I said, Betty, we're gonna do the best we can to, to, to provide volunteers, people that we would know, people that um, are very uh, capable, skillful, uh, have been in the community for a long time who are you know, looking for something to do. And I just hope that that works out, Betty. Um, we're, 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 we're thankful for the information that you're giving us. We, we see ourselves bridging gaps and just connecting needs. And so um, we're still working on the, um, the fire district board um, that, you, that you need there. I have a couple of people in mind, um, have to call them and see, and see, and see what, what, what transpires. I'm excited about uh, an event coming up in March, March 7th through the 11th. I'm part of the Salem Leadership Foundation uh, board, and we're going on a journey. We're uh, pastors and uh, community leaders. We're going on a journey to, um, to Alabama. Uh, we're gonna go look, be looking at some civil history, some uh, civil rights history. We'll be meeting with civil rights leaders there in Alabama. It's gonna be quite a journey. 
Um, we want to become leaders who can bridge difference and create belonging. And, and I just like to repeat that again. We we want to be we want to be people that bridge difference and create belonging. And so we'll be we'll be on a journey. We'll be going to, um, of course, Alabama, uh, to Birmingham, to Montgomery. We'll be going to Selma. Um, you know, we'll be learning. We'll be learning about the history of the civil rights movement uh, to remember the values centered movement um, for justice and, and belonging. So we're really looking forward to that. There'll be some learning labs there. We'll be meeting with, with some key leaders in, in Alabama, pastors and leaders from Oregon will be, will be uh, having um, a sit down with them and learning from them and seeing what we can do to bring some of that um, uh, belonging and, 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 and working together uh, back to back to Oregon. Uh, the, the other event that we're going to be having, uh, the Latin Action Committee. Now, some of you have heard of the Latin Action Committee. We were a group of, we're a group of leaders that began in 2014. Uh, most of us are former migrants. And, uh, but we've been educators, teachers, uh, uh, people that have been involved in, in the community in Kaiser. And we decided that we would gather together. I'm going to give you a little history, but real quick, um, that our vision as Latin Action Committee would be to manifest Latino representation and participation in education and community. And our mission is just to inform and encourage and support Latinos at all levels of civic and education, uh, educational affairs, focusing on, and this is why the annual Latino graduation event is so important, focusing on improving the graduation rate for Latino migrant and EL students. And they're doing a great job at McNary High School. We're just so thankful to be a part of that, um, to, to see uh, how that has just encouraged young people to look to the future regarding education. So through the uh, annual Latino scholarships, which will be, it'll be the fifth annual. This is the fifth annual, uh, annual Latino graduation scholarship that we'll be doing this year. We probably won't be doing it. We, we really love to do it. Uh, you know, rent a venue and come together with parents and come together. But I think this year we're going to, uh, we're gonna do an outside venue. And so we're still looking for that. That'll be May 12th. Uh, 2022. I think that's on a Thursday. We're going to be doing that from 6 p.m. to 7 30. Um, and we'd just like to just share with you that uh, it's an exciting time to bring students that have excelled at, at, at the uh, high school level. You know, we, we're there to promote, to celebrate, and just to embrace Latino success. And we, we want to encourage those young people uh, to be a part of the community where they live, wherever it might be, if they decide that some of them want to come back to Kaiser and be a part and fulfill some of these, uh, uh, some of these positions like the Kaiser um, a Fire District Board or committee, uh, be involved in, in the affairs of our city. Our city is so, so awesome. Just listening to Corey about um, uh, immigration classes. Um, we're excited about that. We want to support that. We want to refer uh, people to Francisco, Corey, if you can just kind of give us, uh, you know, where, when that happens and just give us Francisco's number and we can, we can, we want to hook up the people that, that, that could benefit from that to be able to seek their, their citizenship and uh, be able to receive those, those classes. Um, I think that's all for me today, but uh, again, it's a blessing uh, for us to be a part of the Kaiser community of leaders and uh, people that really do care about their city. And it's just, uh, thank you for being on, uh, allowing me to be on with you, Mayor, just to share these things. Thank you so much. Oh, it's truly an honor and a pleasure. If, if people want to contribute to or get involved with the uh, Latin um, 
Action Committee, do you have a website or an email where they can get a hold of you? We we do. Um, we you can um, you can uh, send that uh, information to J O S E uh, D as in David three o three at gmail dot com. Uh, that that would be me directly, um, or you can send uh, an email to A R T art and olga at msn.com and uh, i just want to just share a story that you brought to that up uh, mayor uh, during during the time of our festival our uh, winter festival that we had the the parade um, one of our one of our neighbors uh, bless our neighbor um, she uh, comes up to the comes up to our door and knocks on the door and she says you know, we, we really didn't know that you were involved in our community. And we just, you know, we just really want to provide a, a donation to the community. And uh, I says, oh, you didn't, you didn't need to do that. She says, I heard you do scholarships for, you do scholarships for kids. And I go, yes, yes, we do. And we're very excited about that project, by the way. She says, well, we want to be a part of that and any other thing that you're doing. And so she gave a very generous donation. That's the city of Kaiser. That, those are the people that make up our city who really care, who see a need, and they, they step up to the plate. So that's, that's one of my little stories of many. That is fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing that uh, that beautiful story of generosity and again, making great investments. I mean, does it get better than investing in our amazing students? And if I remember uh, just a few days ago, our graduation rates came out. McNary, number one again, not only took last year's success of number one, but they doubled down on it. And, uh, but has what has been so important is that there not be gaps between uh, kids based on their income, their um, ethnicity, their ability, you know, whatever it is, every single student matters to the world class McNary Seltz family. And they keep on rocking that and uh, the scholarships through the um, Future First Citizens, the scholarships through the uh, Latin Action Committee and so many more organizations just keep on paying dividends in these amazing young uh, young leaders. So thank you for that. And uh, I'm going to share the email on Facebook. I've been making some notes as we've been going through. Ramiro, you've, Chariots has had some fantastic wins over these last several months. Thank you for hanging with us and thank you for your service on that board. Um, Tell us what's happening and what we're going to be doing. We had some of our first holiday service, which was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Lots of uh, fun things happening uh, at Chariots this month. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Pastor Dominguez and the LAC for everything they do for our youth. Um, that was really reflected this year in the, the graduation rate among uh, Latino students at McNary. And thanks, thank you, Corey, for the um, awesome First Citizens Banquet that we just had. It was my first time attending. Um, but it was really an awesome opportunity to be able to meet with with local leaders and brainstorm about the future of our little big town. And, uh, and it was really awesome to see a bunch of local um, individuals who give so much be honored. Uh, so speaking of the future, uh, we had I had the pleasure of attending a town hall with Senator Wyden this last month to talk about uh, transit. Um, most of uh, everybody's heard that uh, chariots received 6.3 million for five new electric buses that are gonna be used on our most active routes in support of lowering, uh, lowering carbon emissions. Well, with the help of Senator Wyden and Senator Merkley, Oregon was able to secure an additional 6.3 million for an, for an additional five electric buses um, to help us get away from using diesel, which produ produces uh, harmful pollution. Uh, chariots always make safety our number one priority, which brings me to our active air purification systems. Um, so if you don't know, uh, Chariots has recently installed these active air purification systems on our buses to combat the spread of COVID. 
Uh, we're still requiring masks to be worn at all times on the bus and at the transit mall. But one thing that's really cool about this system is that even after COVID, we can continue to use these air purification systems to combat the spread of you know, the common flu or uh, you know, other types of diseases. So that's really awesome. Uh, for one, uh, or for more information on that, you can check out our, our website, uh, chariots.org. And uh, you can check out our Chariots YouTube channel. If you do happen to go to the YouTube channel, you might catch a glimpse of Jabber, who is our newest member at Team Chariots. <laughs> and he has some great tips on how we can share the road, uh, whether you walk, ride, drive, or bike. Um, and a quick reminder, Chariots is now operating seven days a week in the Salem-Kaiser area, and that includes holidays, but um, holiday service will be uh, reduced, and that's our most recent ho or our holiday that's coming up is going to be uh, President's Day on February 21st. And uh, so we'll still be operating on that holiday. We'll just be operating at a reduced um, service level. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's more things coming down the, uh, the that we're going to be talking about here in the future of chariots. And uh, one thing that I want to bring up, too, is that in the conversation that we had with uh, Senator Wyden, there was a lot of uh, additional issues that were going to be addressed with uh, some funding requests um, mm -hmm. that were going to combat homelessness, that were going to combat um, food insecurity, uh, just a lot of awesome things that are that are going to be happening, um, hopefully here in the near future. So uh, yeah, great things happening in the community and, and um, happy to be working with y'all and in, in support of that. So I've put um, up the uh, website for chariots.org to learn more about these amazing programs. Um, I love seeing the buses run seven days a week. It just becomes part of the fabric of people's lives, and it really does get people to the places they need to go. Yeah, and clean buses. Clean online. buses. <laughs> awesome. Well, and um, I know that you saw, but to share with folks, we just completed um, the design for the Wheatland Corridor. So many, many people in our community, which no surprise to me, or people on this Zoom, but to our consultants was the community engagement with the design for the Wheatland Corridor. Of course, we showed up, Kaiser does. Um, the design, it is to be multimodal, which is what our objective was, for passenger vehicle, transit, agricultural freight, which runs up and down Wheatland, bike and ped, to make sure they're comprehensive and well-engineered for safety, accessibility, and to make it inviting and welcoming. And the design that the consultants came up with after they refined it based on the community input is going to be um, very usable for people who are using chariots to be able to get to those um, to the bus stops and to be able to use the, the system a lot more easily. So thank you, uh, Ramiro, for your work on that board. Thank you, Kaiser Community for engaging in the Wheatland Corridor project. I am now, uh, got my marching orders, uh, find money. I can do that. So uh, with our staff, we are looking for ways to fund the construction of that project, which will run just short of $10 million, um, all said and done. So we wanna get that thing teed up with funding, go to construction and get that done, which will open up that entire area for all, for people to have all modes available to them, whatever is going to work with their um, their needs. So Kathy, I, I wanna tell a story and brag about my husband again a little bit more. Uh, when Mike was on the city council in, in the mid eighties, uh, or perhaps it was already the late eighties, he had uh, stopped off to visit Clear Lake School, which at that time was on Wheatland Road and, um, uh, and he noticed, the first thing he noticed is there were no bicycles uh, outside the school. And, and when he went in, he asked about that. And uh, he was told that, well, it's not safe for the kids to ride their bikes to school. And as a result, he, he lobbied to get the bike path that has been there on Wheatland Road for 35 years or so, however long that has been, 
uh, that served the kids when they were at Clear Lake and has continued to serve. So I'm really excited about finally, you know, Wheatland is going to get the upgrade it deserves because it is uh, a major corridor on the north end of Kaiser and uh, serves a lot of people um, as, as the city has grown that uh, live out that way. And there are a couple of uh, schools, um, Forest Ridge is out off of um, Clear Lake and uh, and then of course Clear Lake School itself. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm really pleased that that's a project that's coming. Well, once again, Kaiser keeps showing up. Um, I wanna thank you all today for joining me and my friends for Coffee with Kathy. Um, thank you to Ramiro Navarro from the Chariots Board, Betty Hart from the Kaiser Fire District Board, Corey Filardo from the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce, and Pastor Jose Dominguez from the Luce Valle Church. Kaiser, you keep on showing up, you keep landing on our feet, and we're going to have a great year. Happy January 2022. You all have a great day. Take care. <laughs>